Uh, if seafood fish is not available, where when one lives, is there any seafood allergies? Would you recommend supplementing like iodine, selenium? Well, selenium and iodine you will find in eggs. You will find in or, some, some of the organ meats. It varies with organ meats because it depends on where the animals come from and what the soil has got. But with eggs, it seems like there's a certain, like the, the, the chicken will actually, you know, like human like us humans, you know, um, all animals, they actually try to prioritise. They can deplete the mother but prioritise the, the fetus and the child. Well, it's something similar with the egg. You know, they, they you've got to put a certain amount of selenium, a certain amount of iodine, a certain amount of nutrients inside the egg in order to create a viable chicken. So usually the animal would deplete itself to some extent to get those nutrients in as much as possible. So usually... Um, when you look at the levels of selenium in, in eggs, they're usually consistent because the animal still needs those things to be for viability. So pretty much eggs are a pretty good source. Sometimes you have to eat a few more, a bit of seafood in between. Um, yeah. So when you're looking at selenium, they usually say about 55 micrograms. I usually say about 200 odd or whatever. Um, you know, when you look at, look at tuna here, just 100 you know, just tuna, a, a bit. You know, you can get blue, um, yellowfin tuna, which is wild caught, um, snap frozen, and you have a you have a, a nice steak of that. Um, you'll get more than the RDI, but also you know, two of those, two hundred. You got two hundred micrograms, perfect. Studies that show cancer can actually be inhibited quite a bit. Um, you know. 42% was about 200, um, 250 was around about 46%, which was a Polish study. So pretty good for that purpose as well. Plus, you know, if you look at some of the other animals, like oysters, massive, you know, um, pork, 100. So, you know, you want to, yeah, pork, for example, it's not difficult to get selenium. Um, let's say you have... It's 47.4 times that by, you're looking at five, which is about 500 grams, half a kilo, 500 grams. So that's 237. Easy, you know. And even they say toxic levels above 500. Eh, bullshit. Um, that's basically on certain types of research. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. I've talked about it before. That would be a long, another 20-minute explanation. Uh, so the great thing about it is it actually chelates. That's why selenium is mostly in animal foods. You, you get it in large amounts. Be, beyond the only other plant food is Brazil nuts. The problem is with Brazil nuts, you can get so varied amounts, you can get excessive amounts, and that can be a problem. Um, but with animal foods, you can get in physiological levels. 36, so... When we're looking at six times 600 grams, um, 36, yeah, you're getting good levels. 700 grams will, of beef um, will give you about 250, you know, that really can inhibit cancer up to 46%, um, like colon cancer and stuff like that. This was in Polish studies. Um, so and that was a dose dependent, the more, you know, so they actually observed between the previous study, which they do comment about. And uh, just to clarify that, the 500, what about 28.3? That's 17, nearly 18 ounces for those who are on the non metric system. 600 divided by 3. is 21.2 ounces. So minus 16, which is um, one pound. Um, 5.2 ounces um, of beef to get a really good level, which is basically like um, 252 divided by 55, which is four and a half times the RDI. You're good to go. I mean, on a carnival diet, it is impossible to be deficient in selenium. You know, it's just not possible in that regard. So you don't even have to think about 
um, that the only thing you have to think about is iodine around about you know yeah 100 to 200 so 150 um, micrograms and as you can see you know three ounces of cod you're already there that's less than that's 85 grams um, so it's bugger all so it doesn't take much to basically get um, nearly a hundred uh, um, odd so they you consider the opt the middle 150 but it's between 100 and, and all that so you even that it's not an issue you can go for either nice salt one gram um, you know one gram and a bit of food um milk has a bit like a glass of milk and I, you know if you have like something like this which is 16 ounces um uh, you're basically are getting uh from and that's milk that's raw milk um that i've got there and uh, you're basically looking at 37 and 30 you know oops that's 56 times two you're already remember it's the optimal between 100 and 200 you're already with just two glasses of milk that's my second glass for the day you know i was a bit on the so it's not very difficult um you know boiled eggs you would have to basically to get to 100 divided by 12 you're yeah, looking at eight eggs it's not difficult to get iodine you have a you have a couple of eggs um uh, you know some fish some uh, um, raw milk pretty much you're easier to go some organ meats have but they don't they don't have the information here um and it's annoying i have to go to the other so food's high i have to go to this other page where they've got then selected because they don't have a link for whatever reason so then i go right down here where they go Oop, that's not the one yeah i probably need to do a video covering more foods on on there in that regard um as an option I think um, Bart uses just iodized salt, and that he there's actually a sea, a sea salt which they've actually iodized. So it's still a sea salt, but iodized. Um, so that is an an option. People can quite easily put two grams, um, one gram plus some eggs. You know, so if you were to look at, let's say you didn't like milk, and you did uh, four e um, uh, four eggs. So four eggs times 12 plus one gram of iodinized, you've got 125. You're nearly at 150. There's going to be a bit in the other foods as well. So it's not difficult to get your 150. You don't want to be too high and you don't want to be too low. Um, so that's those are the deficiency levels. These are the sort of the um, risk of iodine induced hyperthyroidism uh, I, don't, I don't buy that that much probably over 300 yes you know, or close to 300 250 above but then again it's in people with which usually have selenium deficiency because they're within the actual thyroid gland there is basically both so, there are enzymes there that are selenium and and iodine dependent you need both and it, usually when you're deficient in one or the other, that's when this becomes a problem, this sort of hyperthyroidism, um, that sort of derangement of the thyroid. But normally, if you're eating an animal, uh, those animal foods, you're going to get be getting good levels of iodine, good levels of selenium. It's not a problem. You don't have to worry because you're getting, with animal foods, you, it's only plant foods you don't get selenium. You don't get much if the soils are poor and unless you're consuming Brazil nuts. And even there, a lot of it's chelated. So how much is bioavailable? How much is in the soil? Anyone's guess. Um, that's another issue in itself, which I'm not going to go into the phytates and all the chelating factors that are in plant um, foods that prevent you from accessing that sort of stuff anyway. But I'm going to go to, you know, talk about the animal foods. And if you're getting plenty of selenium in the animal foods, it's really hard to get toxic with iodine. So unless you're supplementing high doses of some some supplement type, so which I don't recommend. So, yeah. So it's not difficult um, in that regard. It's not rocket science, guys.